flexibility program from head to toe that we do. And within 30 days of doing that, and then you laser focus on putting, then it's likely that you're going to start to feel better and start to reap the rewards of, of the skill set training. But there's only three things you need to be a really, really, really good putter. And I said earlier that if you shoot a 94 from Dave, Dave Pelz's statistics back in 92, 43% of all your strokes are putting. And so if you're shooting a 94, it's likely you have 41 putts. If you shoot an 85, it's like you have 36 putts. And so what's the quickest way to drop strokes is learn how to read a green, learn how to hit your line, learn how to control your speed. So one thing that we're going to cover tonight is just really how to hit your line with putting. And so the face, the face at impact has a 92% effect on direction and the other 8% is path. And so a couple, a couple of, training aids that I use. One is the putting arc. Putting arc, we only spend a little bit of time in this working on our path to make sure that we can drop stroke. So green, green, hitting your line and controlling your speed. So hitting your line has to do with the yardstick drill and the putting arc. And so for everybody on here, I highly encourage you to go out and get yourself a $2 aluminum yardstick, not a wooden yardstick, but a aluminum yardstick. And this is, this is simply how you can drop six strokes in the middle of winter if you're not, if you can't go outside and golf in, in the state you live in. And so the way that we approach this is you grab a yardstick, and you do the training the same way you would do it on the golf course so that we take the same skill set to the course. So for myself, I use a line on the ball. So every time I'm going to put the ball right in the yardstick like I was already read the green, and I'm gonna go through my routine. And so for our students, we, we require them to hit 15 in a row within the first 11 days. And so I'm gonna take a practice stroke. Now that fell off to the right at 31 inches. And so what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that when we hit it, we hold it. That way we can bring it back and put it right here and I can see that my face is open. So it gives me immediate feedback on how to correct my face and impact. Because as I said, 92% of your putts that miss is because your face is not squared impact. And so on a six foot putt, a one degree open face, you're gonna miss the putt. And so if you miss the putt on this yardstick, it's likely that it's open just a half a degree. So a half a degree, is gonna cause you to miss the putt. And so I'm gonna hit and hold this this time. Now that one fell off to the left, I can bring it back here, and I can see that my face is closed. And so this does immediate feedback to help you get good at hitting your line. And once you're able to do this 10 times in a row, then you set your next to 15. And as long as you get to 15 in a row, you're gonna be a pretty good putter. So that fell off. And so we're getting immediate feedback. And so this is how my, this is my routine on the golf course. I set the, pup, the putter right behind the ball, take a few practice strokes. And then I step up to it. And now I'm developing a routine and a skill set. So there's one. And so now I have the skill set to hit one. Now it's going to take concentration to do it 10 times in a row. So for putting, hitting your line is the second most important. The most important is speed. Speed is the most important on all your swings. Speed control, speed control, distance control. 
and there's two. And so this is all you're gonna need right here is an aluminum yardstick, grab one of those, train in your line, then you can work on speed control. So the three things that you, you wanna train when it comes to putting is reading the green, hitting your line, and controlling your speed. Barry Smith. Barry, you got a yardstick, cool. Hey, so you guys, what's that? Barry and I have been chatting back and forth. One of the things he's struggling with is his approach shot between 90 to 165 yards. Okay, gotcha. Anybody have any questions on putting? Got a rowdy crowd in that, cool, cool. And if anyone has questions or, or, or put it in the chat box if you want, I can be help answering some questions or make sure uh, Dean gets uh, that information to kind of focus on. So yeah, whatever you guys need, Dean's gonna go through some stuff, but I would wanna make sure that we're helping you guys out directly as well, what your, your specifics are. So hey, Dean, this is Cedric here. Oops, I'm sorry. Yeah, hi Cedric, go ahead Cedric. <laughs> Hi, you mentioned uh, reading greens, and that always sounds simple. And I think I'm one of the world's worst green readers. It's easy to do the, I shouldn't say it's easy, but it's easier to do the, the practicing on the yardstick and, and practicing the speed. But reading the greens has always been a challenge for me. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, I don't have a, a green in here to walk around and demonstrate it. Uh, we do have that in our in our program. Uh, what 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 challenge do you have reading the green? Kind of go more specific, and maybe I can walk you through it. The break um, breaks, and I, I've been told that you probably should look around the hole three feet from the hole or so, and, and try to decide. But it's for me, it's a challenge. Okay, well, let me ask you: Do you ever walk around the green? Yes. How far? Three hundred and sixty degrees. No, but like from six feet. Or 16 yeah, feet probably or a little bit feet. further than that. Probably about 20, 25 feet. On every time, on every putt? Mm, I'd say probably half of them, to be honest. Okay. So the, the, the biggest thing that I see from even people that I play with is they never walk around the green. They might do like a half moon and they'll, you know, the holes over here, they'll walk over here a little bit and then they'll walk over here, but they never even go, they never even go to the, past the flag. And so when it comes to green reading, without having a green here, what I'll just say is just, if, if you're like this, you know it's gonna break. So what you can do, Cedric, do you, do you have an ability to play golf throughout the winter or, is, or no? Yes, yeah, I'm in Southern California, so I can play 365 days a year for the most part. All right, well, I'm gonna give you a hack, so. You can go tomorrow morning and grab like 10 balls, five, ball, five balls in each hand. And just go pick a green, any green you want, and find a, a, a hole and, and stand 30 feet away from it. And then wherever you're at, let's say you're up here like this, just toss a ball from 30 feet away and watch it roll. And then go to the opposite side and do it in, you know, high, low, left, right. And just take 10 balls and just start walk in the green from 30 feet from the hole and just start tossing balls. And it's like, you know what? That's what I thought it would do. Or, you know what? I didn't read that much break and then squat down and just look and just observe what's going on. And then from down here, just toss a ball. Like you're tossing a quarter and just toss a ball. I mean, if I did that, the ball would roll 30 feet. And so just start tossing balls from different holes, different undulations, different levels. And you'll start to get immediate feedback of what the greens are doing. And your brain is so fucking smart. It will start picking up on me. Thank you. Does that help at all? It does. It does. Okay. Because once you, once you understand how, and then we can get into the, the grain and whether it's fast or slow in the grain, with the green, downhill, uphill. But when it comes to green reading, the, the quickest way, if you never even had the knowledge and information of how to read a green, is just take some balls and just think where it would, think where it would circle down or curve down and just roll it on that line and see what it does. That's the quickest way to get feedback. And then you can start to, 
because green reading is just like painting. It, it, it's it's a skill, but it's also an art. Meaning you, the the more times you paint, the better you get. The more times you read a green, the better you get. Hey Dean, yeah. Dean, one of the I, I'm in the in your low seventies, actually Navy Seals golf, where the students actually are in that group. I know that you were, I can't remember the student you were coaching at the time, but you were talking about the green reading because obviously the first part of your program goes deep into that, but you were telling him, and it was a tip that I used immediately, was that every time that I went out golfing, if I'm with a two-sum or a four-sum or whatever it may be, to walk the green, let everybody else shoot their ball first so I can be actually picking their line so I can actually be learning from somebody else and and maximizing my time and ability to learn as well. Yeah, okay. So Cedric, tomorrow if you play golf on Monday, I don't know if you do, but the next time you play in California, if you, in your you're in a foursome, let's say that you're six feet and everyone else is far away. We'll go go to the farthest ball in from wherever they are, walk around it. Let's say they're 42 feet away, walk 42 circumference all the way to the hole, and just read it, and either stand below them or right behind them and watch what they did and see if you read it right. And you could start to sit there and say, you know what, he read that perfectly, but he missed it and he missed his line. Because there's only three things you need. If you read it really good, did you hit the line that you read? Oh, you know, I hit that line perfectly, but I just didn't hit it hard enough. It's a foot short. So you can, you can walk around all these people's balls and read their green and don't even don't you don't have to tell them you're doing anything just observe and read all their putts like you're a caddy and then you're going to get feedback and see if they hit their line and see if they missed it or hit it right that's what i do that's what i do when i'm when i'm putting for myself did i misread it did i misspeed it or did i miss hit it I mean hitting the line and you know the 18th hole tonight i hit a perfect read perfect line i just missed it because the greens are overseeded right now so they haven't cut them and so those are some of the things you, you deal with is slow greens you know super slow greens i mean i had a chance of playing some 13 stems and those are great what what was uh what was the challenge barry was having 